Of all Australia, more than a quarter is sheep country. Everywhere from the rich grasslands of coast and plains to the great inland desert where rain is almost a memory, the flocks drift and graze. The outback, where a man can own a million acres and use up to 50 of them to support a single sheep. The biggest pastoral area in Australia. well-watered pastures, all too few of them, but every acre rich with feed and sheep. Three million square miles of land of every kind, all of them grazed by the sheep which grow Australia's wool. In the grasslands, wherever the rainfall is reliable, a quiet revolution is changing the face of the land. Exotic grasses and clover build up new, richer pastures that carry many more sheep. The revolution continues. Great new tracts of land, once sterile, are being torn into fertility. These are lands where the rain was good, but the grasses carried no nourishment. Science found the missing factors, minerals and trace elements. The proof? Four million hungry acres in southern Australia now carrying two sheep to every acre. The development, huge sections yet to be cleared and treated with giant recipes of superphosphates, the scientists' prescriptions. Fertilizers carefully blended with a blush of trace elements. Any one of 200 superphosphate prescriptions to make good that missing factor. Every mixture has its own destination, where the soil has been tested and its deficiencies unearthed. Superphosphates to change the fringe desert and the lifeless acres into new pasture land.
for the new and revived pastures more and better sheep. Stud properties in a century and a half of experiment with Merino bloodlines have evolved a distinctive new breed, the Australian Merino. Ninety percent of Australia's sheep are pure or crossbred merinos. Studmasters have founded new bloodlines with new hardiness to withstand extremes of climate and conditions. But the Australian merino has been bred for its wool. In 1860, an average fleece weighed three pounds. Today's average is 11 pounds, and buyers can inspect fine stud rams carrying 20 pounds. One of the country's leading studs borders on the Murrumbidgee River, a permanent water supply essential for such a property in such an area. Irrigation channels bring river water to 2,000 acres whose natural rainfall is only 13 inches a year. The irrigated pastures carry 10 sheep to the acre. Without irrigation, it takes four acres to support one sheep. Although reared on well-watered pastures, rams are bred to endure the harsh conditions of the outback. Isolated stations alone bring life to an otherwise dead land. Without the graziers and their animals, the inland would have remained unused. The demands of the outback have hardly changed since the time of the first settlers. The boundary rider still patrols his fences, although he drives a vehicle and lives on the station instead of riding a horse and sleeping under the stars. The miles are more accessible now. Underground water is the very life of this country, where rainfall is erratic and never enough. The riders still make their routine checks of bores that feed the miles of man-made watercourses. Bore water, almost boiling, is too dense with minerals to support plant life, but it's reliable, and livestock can drink it. A windmill out of action or a tank blocked or damaged can bring danger to a water channel system and disaster to the sheep. With only one sheep to every 12 acres or so, the boundary riders may travel 50 or 60 miles and never see a sheep, unless it's been attacked and killed. Dingo is a hated word. The native dog can maim or slaughter a hundred sheep in a single night, and he doesn't kill from hunger, but with a cunning and sadistic pleasure. With no natural enemies, the dingo is free to follow his savage way until the dog hunter crosses his tracks. The dogger patrols almost a million acres, setting his traps which kill in 12 seconds. He has learned to think like a dog. For the dogger or the fences, isolated from even station life, the only contact with the outside is when the boundary riders come by. In the outback, one hungers for a human voice, for news, 
for supplies, mail, but most of all, just talk. But the real luxury is fresh water, cool from the canvas. Water, a friendly drink in a thirsty land where a man may have to depend like his sheep on the hot mineral mixture that flows along the channels. But afterwards, there's always another track. More fences, more miles. The land seems endless. Sometimes there's enough rain to coax a thin green cover to the ground. Perhaps this time the earth tanks might fill. But it's the underground water that matters. The windmill, the pump. Without them, nothing. The pump that has pushed water into 45 miles of channels, 24 hours a day for 12 years. The pastoral revolution has spread to the world of the outback and machines are doing more and more of the backbreaking work once done only by men and horses. Sheep ignore the sound of aircraft, but still respond to mustering calls from any direction. The new style musterer is pilot, mechanic and radio man. The new style mustering needs fewer men and is quicker. Roger quite a successful muster. I think there's only one that I've missed. No, old Yule, she's in about a quarter of a mile from the fence. So I'd suggest you send the two boys across there now to uh, pick up the sheep. If you could go up to the Land Rover there and uh, pick up that ewe, then if you go across to the one mile dam, I think it's pretty hot by the time you get there, I think. At any rate, if you could come straight up to the steering shed when you have finished, I hope you get a more good luck.
horses and dogs will always be needed for the muster, even on a highly mechanized station. Horses can go where vehicles can't. Without the trained intelligence of dogs, it'd be almost impossible to work sheep. Mechanized or not, the muster is the climax of the year. Idle and deserted for most of the time, the yards come alive at shearing. In the shadowed heat of the sheds, it's harvest time for the wool men. The shearer is a traveling man. He comes to do a job and he does it quickly and efficiently. Because he's paid by piecework and the neighboring station is waiting on his services, he doesn't straighten up until the long day is over. Shearing teams travel the whole range of the sheep country following the season for 10 months of the year and to their hands come the hardy Australian merino sheep. The flocks have survived drought and dingoes on land where no other breed could live and give in return the finest wool on the market. Across the continent, the clip is gathered in. More than a quarter of the world's wool, over half its fine merino wool, from Australia's sheep country.